Hey everyone, Nathaniel Rumpeljantz here from Nintendo Prime. Got a bit of a Prime news-ish sort of news summary for you guys today. We got six big stories because there's just not enough time to get videos out for all this. So you know what? Screw it. Here's a little news summary. You kind of see uh, a, a new background, a new setup you guys probably haven't seen before. This is the computer setup. Uh, you guys hopefully are enjoying it. Now, uh, before I get into all the news, I got to remind you, we are giving away a copy of Monster Hunter Rise and two $20 Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox gift cards. To enter, head down to the description or the pinned comment. Now, our first story deals with Japanese sales updates for PlayStation 5 and Nintendo Switch. Mostly Nintendo Switch, although we got some PS5 sales here. Uh, this comes from Famitsu for last week, and yes, Switch is number one, uh, 89,000. 927 units so essentially 90,000 nintendo switches sold last week that's about a 15 to 18 somewhere in there ish thousand increase over the prior week uh when it comes to playstation 5 it sold uh 22,509 units that's 3,000 less units than they actually sold last week so a bit of a down down like turn but eh, not that big of a deal still um really really good for playstation who's basically selling out of every single system we can have no other really notable sales happen for playstation 4 or xbox series x or anything so we're not going to talk about those uh the entire top 10 software for the week was haha -ha, nintendo switch uh back at number one is super mario 3d world at over fifty thousand units uh but you know what here's a look at the top 10 and honestly uh, no real surprises here. This is just what seems to happen. Every now and then you'll see, you know, a PlayStation game peak up in the top 10 for a week, uh, but then usually quickly vanishes. Switch is the dominant platform in Japan that doesn't look like it's going to change moving forward here in 2021. So there you go. Pretty cool. Uh, let's move on to our next story then, shall we? Because uh, you guys heard that Microsoft just completed a purchase of bethesda and zenimax you know zenimax really that bethesda's under right we all know that was approved by europe and the united states so that's done now that's final well guess what guess what um today they're doing a roundtable discussion with bethesda now this discussion will not have any news and by the time you watch this video the discussion will have already happened so i'll be linking to the discussion down in the description uh but they are essentially using this to introduce the bethesda team to microsoft fans xbox fans so uh yeah if you're interested in seeing how microsoft and bethesda are going to work together even though there's not any news or real game announcements in this go check that out it's probably really really interesting and i'm probably even watching it while i'm editing this episode so there is that our next story again deals with Microsoft because there is now a report from onmsft.com on Microsoft, if you can't figure that out, uh, stating that Ubisoft Plus is going to be coming to Game Pass. Now, I can obviously not verify that this is going to happen, but Jez Corbin, uh, who is a writer for Windows Central came out and actually commented on the piece and said things like, well, you know what? I've actually heard that Ubisoft is coming to Game Pass as well. However, he was under the impression it was just going to be older Ubisoft games, like from their vault coming to Game Pass, uh, not Ubisoft Plus, but at the same because Ubisoft Plus is like their service to get all the, the recent games on PC. So what's interesting here is that he said he also thought that EA Play, when he heard about that originally, it was just going to be a vault. It wasn't going to be the full EA Play, and if it was, it would end up being like a higher tier service on Game Pass, which it wasn't. Microsoft rolled it into their standard service. So he's like, you know what? This could just be that same thing again where Ubisoft Plus is going to get rolled in. Now, notably, EA Play does get all the new games from EA, but it's six months after release, uh, so you don't get them day one. That kind of encourages people who want day one copies to still go out there and boop, 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 get that money, money spending to get the day one in. But if you're not interested in day one uh, and you can wait six months, Sounds like Ubisoft Plus getting rolled in the Game Pass would be a very good deal and just massively increase the value of Game Pass. Yet again, Game Pass continues to be one of the greatest values in gaming. Moving on, our next story is about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Uh, this was actually announced yesterday. It looks really, really good. It's like old school arcade version of TMNT, brand new. Uh, you're seeing a little bit of footage of it here. I think it looks fantastic. It really reminds me of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade, the second one, uh, Turtles in Time, which is my favorite Turtles game to date. Uh, I'm getting a lot of like 
mm, little fuzzy feelings inside about all this. So I really think that you should uh, check this game out. It is announced for PC and game consoles. We're not sure which consoles it's coming to, but still, whew, it looks really good. So I'm, I'm hoping that... Uh, it, it turns out as well as it looks. You know, you can see Rocksteady and Bebop in it, and the, it just looks so good. So, yay, uh, we might finally be getting a really good Turtles game again. Our next story is about Square Enix Presents, which was announced today. Uh, it's happening a week from today on March 18th at 10 a.m. Pacific time, which for me is noon central. Uh, probably live streaming this because there's going to be some Switch news in it, along with other platforms as well. Here's the uh, announcements they plan to have. A new Life is Strange game will be announced during this show. They're also going to have news about Outriders, Marvel's Avengers, uh, Tomb Raider 25th Anniversary Edition, uh, new uh, games from Square Enix Montreal, uh, Just Cause Mobile Update, and then, yes, Ballin Wonderland, which has already been announced. Obviously, they're going to do some updates for that. So this is really cool. Uh, I'm glad they're doing this. This is kind of like their version of a Nintendo Direct, a.k.a. Directly to You. Uh, I think this is uh, just neat to see this from Square Enix. Uh, no Final Fantasy news or anything, but hey, that's okay. This is a pretty good slate, and we'll definitely be tuning in right here on Nintendo Rounds. So tune in for my live reactions. So our last uh, story today is about Animal Crossing New Horizons. Nintendo, on the official Animal Crossing Twitter, put out a new image, uh, which you're seeing right here. And this image has a resolution of 57060 by 32040, which is more than 4K. But this image going up started a lot of speculation over, hey, look, is this from Switch Pro? Are we getting 4K? The thing is, that resolution is beyond 4K. So it's likely unrelated to a Switch Pro or anything like that. But again, we don't know. Uh, but how could they even have this resolution of an image come out? It comes from PC. They are taking these screenshots of a PC version of Animal Crossing. You might be saying, is Animal Crossing coming to PC then? No. All video games are made on computers factually, guys. The builds are recompiled and put on Switch, but they're built on PC. So it being playable on PC for screenshot purposes is not surprising. And Nintendo actually, with like Kirby Star Allies in the past, also really screenshots that were higher resolution than native. Now, typically they're pretty smart about this and they only release native resolution images of games when they're advertising things. And in this case, they're obviously advertising St. Patrick's Day and all that. But still, um, yeah, I think that this is just kind of one of those oopsies from Nintendo. We forgot to release a downsampled version of this to 1080p uh, and it has nothing to do with 4K Switch stuff in the future. But you know what? We don't know. Only Nintendo really knows. This specific resolution is a very odd one, uh, so not really relevant to TVs. But again, maybe it's an upsampled 4K image. I have no idea. I mean, we don't know. We just don't know. So speculate away. Have your fun with it. Don't think it's Switch Pro related. Not There's no rumor, no report. This is just people speculating on this image. All right, folks, that's it uh, for this kind of roundup of news. Let me know what you think about this style of video, uh, my background, all that jazz. Uh, hopefully it, it focused well. I have no idea until I get into editing. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon as well, set to all notifications, and make sure notifications are actually turned on on your mobile device so you get the notifications for every live stream, every video we put up. Uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, check out our latest episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast featured HMK. We deep dive in the Switch Pro rumors and reports. We also talked about the Microsoft Bethesda deal. Uh, so go ahead and check that out as well. I'll uh, link to that down in the description and maybe even in the pinned comment because I, I love the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I think it's the best piece of content I produce on a weekly basis. Maybe until this video. I don't know. We'll see how this does. Maybe this is something I could do more often. All right, folks. I'm Nintendo Robo Jens from Nintendo Prime and I'll catch each and every one of you in the next video.